The thing to know about being a crook is that it's easy work if you can get people to believe. Fortunately, what people want more than anything in the world is to believe. Try your luck at a game of pure chance. Find a little winner. Buy yourself a big dinner. Find the Red Queen, the Babe of Hearts. Take it to Easy Street. Of course, it's best not to believe too much in anything. If you want to live a long and healthy life, in my experience, which is considerable. Two days ago, you were strolling down Easy Street, tipping your hat to strangers. But it wasn't good enough for you, was it? Well, my friend, how do you like yourself now? Two days ago, you had a wife, you had a home, you had 20 grand in cash on the bedroom dresser. Yeah, that's me, Mitch Allison. Maybe it was destiny. Maybe it was a sucker inside. I don't know, maybe both. They got together, shook hands, had a drink, and decided to give poor Mitch the merry ha-ha. How does this happen to me? Two days ago. Two sweet, dumb days ago. I had bought a big case of the bubbly. The good stuff. Then bet me had stayed up all night in the nicest possible way, if you know what I mean. Oh, I made sure she was good and exhausted. I should have been, too. But of course, Mitch Allison had something else on his mind. Bad my beauty. Everything I ever wanted in a woman, and a hell of a lot more than I ever expected. Oh, Mitch, you ain't got your man. She had spent three months setting it up. Then pulled an intricate double-double cross on the madam of a parlor house. The proceeds were in our personal possession. Twenty grand, to be exact. Bet, I'm heading for the trains to double your money. Better con man than husband. Kiss, kiss, your one and only Mitchie. P.S. Left twenty dollars. Please pick up my mohair jacket cleaners. Ticket on the dresser. It had taken Bet three months to make that twenty grand. In three hours on the train, I could double it. Skill. The Mitch Allison kind of skill. Chick and Dolly, if you can believe it. They were from Oxnard, if you can believe it. They'd sold their citrus grove to Uncle Sam, who wanted the land for a radar base. They were on their way to Vegas. They had the cash with them. You know, it's watching this country go red that's killing me, blood red. Used to be red, white, and blue. Now it's all gone red, black, and Jew. <laughs> Sweet old chicken dog. I'll call you, young man. It was a hot ticket. It was perfection itself. You could work the trains for a lifetime and not run into a chick and a dolly. And when I proposed raising the stakes, you know, to give them a chance to win a little bit back. I hope you know what you're doing, Chick. Hell, doll, why not live a little, sweetie? It'll be fine. Now, whose deal is it, young man? Bingo. 
I realize that right about now, Bet would probably be having some differences of opinion with what I'd done. But I also knew that when I came home with the dough, well, 40 grand buys a lot of amnesia. Hold on a sec, Pops. I just want to feel it for a sec. Thrill. You know. You see that? Goosebumps. Okay, let's do it. Hold on, son. Did we win? Did we win? Yes, we did. Yes, we did, my <laughs> <laughs> Another hand, young man. I'd hate to leave you without a chance to win some of your money back. I don't have any more money. But I guess you know that, don't you? It's a scam, isn't it? Oh, it's a first-class Framus. Man, you guys are good. Framus. I don't believe I know that word. You're a pair of grifters, working the trains, conning the cons. Christ, and me thinking I was so smart. Well, I guess it just ain't your day. Well, the sad thing is, Pops, it ain't your day either. Because you ain't going home with the dough. Oh, sore loser, huh, kid? I'd like to know where you got your 20,000. Look at them. Look at me. Shut up! If you were the porter, who would you believe? <laughs> and so it began. My descent into hell. If I ever saw them again when the odds were even, I'd kill Dolly fast. Chick slow until the living envied the dead. Spend any time in the desert and you'll see it has a real sense of humor. Loves to play tricks on your mind. You start to go soft from the heat. Pretty soon. You're hearing things you can't see. But she was no mirage. She was real. And I do believe that no woman in my memory had ever given me such a going over and seemed to like so well what she saw as the one sitting next to the cad's driver. Need a ride? Stop the car, stupid. It was a break. And just when I was beginning to think that I had no luck at all. Babe! Oh, you're so damn tight, you squeak. Mr. Martin Lonsdale, do you know that? Babe, please. If only I'd known what you were like before I'd married you. Same here. Newlyweds. You know I should have jumped out then and there. I tell you, if Bet ever talked to me like that. Jealous? Selfish? Stupid? This is supposed boring. to be our honeymoon. Oh! I always wanted to have a honeymoon in a ghost town. It's a resort hotel. It's a ghost town! You're too cheap and jealous to live it up a little. I just want to be alone with you. Is that a crime? Oh. Look, babe, you're pushing this too far. So what are you doing, Mr. Lonsdale? What's that? For a living. A printer? Yeah, he sells all these hotel room Bibles that they have in hotels all over the world. It's sexy to hear him talk about tight faces and bindings. That's why I married him. You want a drink? And here, my friends, are the voices of God. Babe had made quite a dent in the booze, but it didn't seem to make her any nicer. Now she was driving him from the back seat. Marty! Marty! Turn that off! You want to spoil the honeymoon? <laughs> if I'm going to be the chauffeur, you can at least let me have the radio. What would it hurt to be a little nice? You don't want Martin here to send us over a cliff, do you? Oh, he wouldn't do anything that exciting. See, he likes things kind of limp. Quit the crying! 
Suicide Baby Act and drive. This entire marriage has been a mistake. I see that now. I see that now. You know what this is? This is a sock. This is what Martin does best. We've been married not for three days, I don't know, and I... Martin! Martin! I guess I rode Hoppy a little too hard. Yeah, I guess you did. Oh, hey, pal, you know you get used to it. That's what wives do. But you don't throw yourself over a cliff just because they boss you around a little. I got a problem here. Yeah, I'll say. $50,000 in traveler's checks. Do you know anyone who can help me cash them? Someone with uh, dark hair, medium build, who can wear his suit? Oh, I should have known you were working some angle on the kid. <laughs> I bet you know a little something about working the angles. Quite a little something, I should say. She offered me 25%. We talked. We ended up at 50-50. If you want my opinion, she got herself a bargain. I felt bad about Martin, but not that bad. A guy who would end his life over a dame like this one. Well, the world hadn't lost much. can't use any of the branch banks, you know? The branch banks. They have a central referral system. You try to push paper, they nail you on your second try. Oh, she was throwing everything she had at me. And believe me, what this gal had was plenty. You think badly of me, don't you? You don't like me? I can understand that. I grew up by myself. For most of my life, I've been a woman alone. And a woman alone has to learn how to take care of herself. I am alone. But you don't have to make me feel so... Let's clear something up. I'm married, and I actually love my wife. But maybe that's too hard a concept for a woman who drives her husband off a cliff. So beat it, sister. I got work to do. She was 110 pounds of pure rat poison. I didn't want to be the rat. I'm on a roll, baby, rolling on down the line. I'm on a roll, baby, you know I'm looking fine. I'm on a roll, baby, bring it on home this time. Cause I'll do anything for you. Girl, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything you want me to. Oh, I'm on a roll, baby, rolling on down the line. I'm on a roll. You know we're looking fine. I'm on the road, baby. Bring it on home this time. Bring it home this time.
have to make a phone call. I'll meet you in the room. Don't worry. I trust you. You lost it, didn't you? You lost my money. You no good two-bit chiseler. Excuse me, but I might understand you're actually angry with me for doubling your money. What the hell are you talking about? I literally have fifty thousand dollars, literally in my hands as we speak. And if you're angry with me, you doubled the money. Then well. I suggest we seriously reevaluate this entire relationship. How many times do you expect me to fall for this, Mitch? Just come and get me better. La Casa del Condor outside Desert Hot Springs. I'm here under the name of Martin Lonsdale. Mitch, if you are lying to me, it'll be the end. It'll really be over this time. Did you hear that? I hope you heard that. Half of 50 was 25. Not enough for me. Certainly not enough for Bet. I would have to gain possession of Babe's share. I would have to give her the slip. But how? That shouldn't be too tough a job. Not for Mitch Allison. I'll never forget you, Mitch. You're the one that got away. You're the one that got away. The one that got away. Got away. Maybe it was going to be a little tougher than I thought. Yeah. Mitch, you know why you touch me? Oh, oh, oh my head hurts. Touch me. Unless something happens. Touch me. Oh, Hello, Mr. Lonsdale. Now, where is Mr. Vegas's money? I don't see it anywhere. And I've looked everywhere. Perhaps you are unfamiliar with who I am. I am Mr. Agolino, and you, Mr. Lonsdale, have $50,000 belonging to my employer, Mr. Vegas. You were told to deliver a briefcase containing that $50,000, Mr. Lonsdale, to a Mr. Salmonelli in Palm Springs. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm not Martin Lonsdale. I'm, I'm someone else. Mr. Lonsdale. Yeah. If you would be saying that you are not Mr. Lonsdale because you had already spent Mr. Vegas's money, we would be having a serious problem right now. <laughs> I'm not Lonsdale. I'm not. I'm not this guy. So, look, when you found me, was I rolling in the dough? No. Was I out cold on the linoleum? Yes. Doesn't that tell you something? The girl has the money. The teller at First Indio didn't mention anything about a girl. You know, of course, what I'm paid for. And did you think, Mr. Lonsdale, that I might just walk away from this? Oh, come on. Wait a second. Take it easy, buddy. Please. I'm not a man who likes his work, Mr. Lonsdale. I'm going to quit this vile profession as soon as I've amassed a certain sum which you impede. I do not kill because it gives me pleasure, sir. I kill because it will help pay for me to go to medical school. And how do I kill? I do autopsies on the living. Oh, my God, you're a lunatic. Yes. And there were so many of us, too. The money, Mr. Lonsdale. I don't have it. The money? If I had the 50,000, I'd give it to you. I'd give it to you. But I don't have the 50,000. What do you mean, you don't have the 50,000? Oh, but thank God. You don't have the money. On your stomach, pal, and lose the knife. Miss, please. Do not play games with a gun. I said, get down. Now. I'd do it, Doc. She'll drop you in a heartbeat. No 
nobody, and I mean nobody, kills Mitch Allison. Nobody but me. Take it easy. I had the money. I just lost it. You lost it? I worked three months setting up a grift and you've lost it. Madam, if I may. Shut up. Why well, you're angry with me. Oh. I see. Now, on your feet. Give me the gun back. No. You don't want to kill me. You don't. My name is Babe, five foot nine, dark hair, accent, caddy. Oh, you'll find her. Matt! Matt! She was gone. Bet was gone. I had a suit of clothes belonging to the late Martin Lonsdale. I had a 32 Colt that I'd given my wife as a first anniversary present. Nothing else in the world to call my own. Mr. Lonsdale, you know what? I've been lied to, laughed at, cut up, humiliated, and cheated. I've lost my wife and my self-respect, so just don't. Look, I I'm not Lonsdale. My name is Christopher Shaw. The real Lonsdale was some guy Babe hooked up with at a motor court, and then something happened. Something? You bumped him, didn't you? No, nobody bumped him. I, I, I guess he had a bad heart. He, he and Babe were fighting, and, and, and I, somehow he just dropped dead. I, I don't know. It just happened, please. Oh, I love this story. So the two of you dump his body and drive back and forth all day long, waiting for just the right chump to come along who could cash his checks. Why didn't you cash him yourself? He couldn't. That's Pastor Colin. Please don't shoot me. Boy, where did she get a hold of you? In the casino. You from Vegas? I'm, I'm from Salt Lake. I print Bibles. That part really was true. I was in Las Vegas for the annual convention. When all you Bible printers get together. Exactly. <laughs> I met Babe. <laughs> Everything 
changed. I, I, my mind must have just forgot about my wife and forgot about my kids. <laughs> told me to meet her here. I guess she's not coming back. Go home, kid. People love to forgive. It gives them power. Your wife, sure she bugs you sometimes. They all do. But they're the ones who forgive. Not women named Babe. Women named Babe, they'll eat you for breakfast with a cup of Ovaltine. Go back to Salt Lake. Print Bibles. That's grift enough for you. Hey, kid, one thing. How'd you pull that stunt at the canyon? There's a body at the bottom of the canyon. Yeah. That was the real Lonsdale. I just dropped to the ground and went under the car. He almost rolled over me when he pulled out. Nice. So there's Mitch Allison, two pockets full of nothing. Your wife, gone. Fifty grand, gone. You had a great future, and it's all behind you. Did you really have the 50,000? Right in my hands. Get in. I feel funny. I think I'm getting a cold. No, I don't know. I don't know if I have it in me anymore. Nobody can be smart all the time. Why was I ever smart? Just think of all the people who want to kill you. They want to kill you so badly if you hadn't outsmarted them. You think? I bet you could steal his socks off a guy with sore feet without even taking off his shoes. Mitching. Huh? I bet you're the biggest heel in the world. You can live your life safe. You can live your life boring, nothing ever happens. Then you die. Or you can take some chances, have some fun. One minute you're so high you've got goosebumps. The next minute you're rolling in the dirt. It can be hard to take. But that's the Mitch Allison way.